Good evening. This reading is by Dennis Massa. It is from the book entitled The Mark by Maurice Nicole. There is something in us eternally young that can understand beyond the visible world, beyond phenomenal reality. But this one thing in us, eternal young, is lost to us in the world of objects and the external things of the senses and using the logic of the senses, wastes itself in useless speculations which are without meaning for it, because it is capable of understanding a higher logic and a new world utterly different from this dark world of sense and temporal logic into which it passes and in which it becomes lost. This magical side of ourselves, which in childhood we feel, is destroyed by life and remains only as a memory, dimly felt at moments, recalling for a fleeting instant something that we knew once and possessed and which has gone out of our lives. It is this, this one in us, that we must find again, for it is about this absent part of ourselves which is lost that all these parables are speaking about. Its real destiny is to be taken out of life, withdrawn from the power of outer things and outer events. In this way a man is made alive again, for as we are in our present state, in which this one is lost, we are all living in the wrong way however we desire to do good and however we act. This one has lost his true connection and as long as this is the case with a man he has not reached his right state from which his own evolution can begin. He has not repented, that is, undergone metanoia. So he perishes. And as long as this one thing in him is lost, all he does is wrong. For when a man is overpowered by outer life and influenced only by all that acts upon him from outside and argues only from what he can see, he is machine driven by his senses and internally the wrong way around. He is dominated by external life and has no life in himself. That part of him which is truly himself and from which his own individual existence and growth can begin is lost. It is in the wrong place and this is sin. That is, in this state everyone has missed the mark, missed the very idea of his own existence. People often feel something of this for themselves and know that by feeling too strongly or being over anxious about things or always upset and worried and at the mercy of life they are doing wrong in some indefinable way which has nothing to do with morality or moral wrong and that they should not let life have such power over them and that by doing so they are guilty of some crime which they feel instinctively and do not understand. And they do not realize that all through the Gospels it is precisely this wrong state of a man that is being spoken of, and that in view of it nothing else is of importance, and that unless a man realizes that he is in this state and begins to seek for that part of him which is lost in things that do not matter and do not belong to it, and draws back in himself and begins to alter his relation to life, he has failed his purpose and has not understood the secret of his existence. People think the Gospels are about eternal life and about a moral relation to the external life and they do not see they are about man and his possible rebirth. In nearly every sentence they are speaking about man's inner state, about the wrong state he is in and how this state must be changed. They speak not about external life or outer morality but about man himself and the condition he is in within himself in life. They do not speak about a man as being simply good or moral, but about a man's actually changing and becoming a different man. This is their whole message, that a man can and must change in himself and become a different person, 
however good or bad he is in life, and the first step is metanoia. What is the nature of this side of us? This side that is really ourselves and which we have all lost. Is it possible to define it or make it more clear to our understanding? This one, in the guise of the prodigal son, journeys into a far country. He wastes his substance and spends everything, and at the same time a famine arises in that country. He begins to be in want, and no man gives him anything. It is then that he comes to himself and remembers, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish of hunger? He exclaims. What is this hunger, this want, this famine? And what is th this bread? The parable must be lifted wholly from its literal setting and its physical meaning. It is not physical hunger or want that is meant, nor little of bread, nor do wasting his substance and spending everything refer to actual money. The man was dead, but he came to himself and so began to be alive again. In the act of remembering himself, a truth came to him. He did not really belong to the place he was in, in the far country to which he had journeyed, where no man gave him anything and the food of swine was all that he can get. Life had become meaningless, and such meaning as offered itself was like the food of swine, nothing but husks. There is not a single thing in external life that cannot be entirely meaningless. This is not a moral truth, but a fact. However uncomfortable it may be to face it, it is equally a fact belonging to the nature of things that everyone seeks the fulfillment of himself and all that he craves in life. Although he is disappointed, he feels either that his case is exceptional or that he will eventually find what he seeks, or he feels that his circumstances were different or life were different, everything would come to him as he desires. But life cannot be essentially different. Life is essentially is always the same, and a man is always locked up in the prison of himself, of his own jealousies, hatreds, and cannot escape this feeling of himself, however outer circumstances change. It is not from life that a man suffers, but from himself. As long as he sees all he needs and all he desires as outside him, and strives to reach it in this way, he wastes meaning, and eventually reaches famine in spite of the greatest riches he may have gained. And as long as he feels that what is himself consists in all this, he sins. That is, he misses altogether what a man is meant to do and can become. He misses the mark. He is no longer distinct from his senses and their images of life. He has forgotten himself and is once more a man lost or dead. But if he remembers anything, he knows that the state of consciousness he experienced is the secret of life and that if he could find it again and keep it, nothing else would matter. This is metanoia in the fullest meaning. It is a new state of consciousness, suddenly touched and as suddenly vanishing. In this state of consciousness, a man finds himself. He finds what is lost. He finds I. This is the first truth, the first realization of it. This is when a man becomes alive and is the point from where inner evolution starts. Everything a man attempts in his ordinary state is done in the wrong way and from the wrong place in himself. So Christ repeats, unless ye repent, unless ye reach metanoia, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And in the parable of the prodigal son, this revulsion of the mind in a man is put in dramatic form, for the whole parable is internal in its meaning. The one in a man becomes withdrawn from the power of sense and the conceptions of sense and comes to itself and remembers. What was lost is found. The man awakens from the sleep of the senses, from death, and becomes alive again.